uh, this video um, start a um, I'm going to keep talking about the external direct products but I'm going to talk about some properties of external direct products here we have a uh, very important theorem the order of an element in a direct product the order of an element of a direct product of finite groups of course is the least common multiple of the orders of the components of elements so if you have g1 g2 gn the order in a direct product um, is going to be the least common multiple of the order of G1, G2, Gn. The proof is really easy. I'm not going to do it. Um, I can do it in another video if, if that's really requested. Okay. Uh, so let us take a um, an example okay so uh, for instance um, if we have uh, let us say z25 external product of by z5 okay and we check for uh, the, the number of elements of order, let us say, order 5, for instance. So we want, we want elements of order 5. Um, okay, so we use this theorem order of an element in a direct product the order of an element of a direct product of a finite groups is the least common multiple of the orders of the components of elements so we need a element AB from this direct product of order 5 well but that is going to be the least common multiple of the set the order of A and the order of B right so for this either the order of A is 5 and the order of B is 1 or the order here is 5 and here is 5 or the order here is 1 and here is 5 right so we have three cases case 1 case 2 case 3 right okay in case 1 we have the order of A is 5 and the order of B is 5 too okay so we have four choices for A four choices for A and four choices for B right so this gives 16 elements of order 5 okay so 16 elements of order 5 case 2 either A is 5 and B is 1. So in this case there are four choices for A, right, we are in 25, in Z25, and only one for B. So this gives us four more elements of order 5. Case 3, order of A equals 1, order of B equals 5. Okay, this time we have one choice for A and four choices for, for, for B. So we have four 
more elements of order 5, right? Okay, so we can say that Z25 um, external product Z5 has 16, 4, 4, has 24 elements of order 5. Uh, we take another example. Let us say we want to determine the number of uh, cyclic subgroups of order 10 in let us say Z100 direct product by Z25. Okay, so same procedure. We are, but this time we, we need we want cyclic subgroups. So AB we want AB of order 10, right? Okay, AB of order 10. So first case a equals 10, B equals uh, 1 or 5, right? Okay, that's 4, okay. Um, but if you look well, Z100 has a unique cyclic subgroup of order 10, okay? And any cyclic group of order 10 has four generators. Uh, you can check that a few videos ago. So we have four choices for A. Okay, four choices for A. And we have five choices for B. Okay, so we have here 20 possibilities for AB. Okay. Okay, I will remind quickly the, the theorem that uh, allows us quickly to, to find this. It was the number of elements of each order in a cyclic group. If D is a divisor of N, the number of elements of order D in a cyclic group of order N is phi of D. So you have a cyclic group, G is a cyclic group, order N, and you want to, 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 to find how many elements in G of order D, meaning G's in G of order with order D, how many elements, how many G's of this particular order you have, okay? Well, if D, knowing that D divides N, okay, knowing that D divides N, Okay, so that's the function phi of d. You just put d inside the function phi and you get the number of, of elements. Okay, so you can use that here. Okay, if a is 10 and b is 1 or 5, uh, a is 10, so you are in z100, and this has a unique subgroup of order 10. Uh, and any cyclic group you, you are, this is, you know this, cyclic group of order 10 has four generators. Okay, just, just use this. If you still have any uh, difficulty with all this, just check that Z10 for instance. This is a cyclic group and it has four subgroups 
okay probably this is the the quickest and the simplest way to check that okay so here you have four choices for um, for the element a with order 10 okay um, what about 2 so a is 10 b is 1 or 5 so now so we need um, 10 right cyclic subgroups of order 10 so a can be 5 and for instance b can be 1 I'm sorry um, no not No. Okay, so um, cyclic subgroups of 4 to 10. Okay, so A can be 10 and B 1 or 5. Okay, so here A can be, for instance, 2 and this 5, right? 2 times 5, 10. Okay, yes. Okay, since any finite cyclic group has a unique uh, subgroup of order 2, easy to check. There is only one choice for A, and obviously there are, there will be four choices for B. Okay, so in this case, one times four, you have four other possibilities. Okay, uh, well there is no case three, right? Well there is no case three. So Z a hundred direct product Z25 uh, so we have 20 and 24 has 24 elements of order 10 because each cyclic subgroup of order 10 has 4 elements of order 10 and no two of them can have an element of 4 to 10 in common. So there must be uh, 24 dividing 4, meaning 6 cyclic subgroups of order 10. Well, I, I, this is this, this is like um, um, yes, this is funny but true. This this method at the end of the day is like determining the number of sheep in a flock by counting legs. So your legs would be twenty four, and then you divide those legs by four. And you know you have six sheep, okay? But so the idea is more or less the same here. Yeah.